Sharon, you're on here. Okay. This sounds good. Okay. I'm Barbara Garrity Blake, and it's August 20th, 2009. And we are in the home of Mr. Steve Goodwin, speaking to Mr. Otis Lewis and his brother, Charlie Clifton Lewis. Right. Okay, so, brothers. Brothers. Let's start off. Can you all tell me about what community you were born in, where you mm -hmm. grew up? This is Charlie. I was born in Beaufort, North Carolina. Spent most of my days in Beaufort. Mm -hmm. Married a sweetheart I went to school with. After a while, one daughter got her off nursing school, got her through that. But I liked fishing so good, that was the only way to keep from starving, really, was the fishing. Well, what what year were you born in, Mr. Nineteen twenty-seven. Nineteen twenty-seven. Mm-hmm. Okay. And my father got us all going into the fishing. He got a chance to go with the Wallace M. Quinn. He went on the Fletcher Cox. I believe the year of nineteen forty-one. Some of these years could be off, mm -hmm. been so long. Okay. He fished a small boat. At the time, Quinn had two boats there. And he fished that boat that summer in Pascual, Mississippi. We got leaking so bad, I weren't fishing. I had only turned out 14, I believe. Of course, I knew more than he did, you know. You're 14. Uh, yeah, I knew more than he knew. <laughs> anyway, we go over to the shipyard. Now, this man with the shipyard, he built push boats, oil boats, recording boats, seismograph boats of any size. And boy, I thought to myself, put a mast in one of these, we'd be healed. You know, the nice boats compared to what we were on. But it didn't turn out that way at that time. Father kept looking around. He comes up with uh, another boat. A guy had a couple Sharpies out of Virginia. Uh, Stanford was his first name, Billy Stanford. He had two sons. He put one on each boat. He happens to need a small boy to run this engine. He knew everything. He was going to face the whole boat. So I get me a first job just before turning 15. Boy, I knew something. Well, it turns out, I thought the world of his two sons. We did make a few dollars. I come back rich, Carter County. And that's pretty much right now. But where were you fishing? Pascagoula. Pascagoula. As that young, as a teenager. That's right. How about that? But that was a few, just a few months. So. All right, Mr. Uh, Otis. Well, I didn't start fishing as soon as he did. <laughs> uh, You're younger. What year were you born in? I was born in 1933. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first, when I first started fishing, uh, was with uh, my father. I believe it was the white gold that he had then. It was one of those steel boats from Pascagoula, Mississippi. And we fished her one year, and then he got the next year in 51, he got the Captain Charlie Lewis, they named it after Daddy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went with him, I worked in the net, and 
the way we had to do then, we didn't have no power blocks and all. And he started me off pulling corks around the net. And, that's, and I started doing that. And then I started working in the net after, you know, pulling the net. And then after he, uh, I piece with him, I, I think it was two years or something other like that there. And then he went shore captain. And after he went shore captain, I went with my brother, Charlie Clifton. And uh, we, uh, uh, I went, I worked in the net with him at first. And then I went pilot with my brother. And we uh, fished, uh, I think what the first boat he had there was the Black Gold with that company. Of course, he'd been with Smith and before then, and then he went with the, the Walkers. And uh, so went pilot with him, and then we were, I don't know where we had that boat one or two years, and then they built a brand new boat for my brother, the Bill Walker. And we feast her a couple years or so. And then the brothers, they, they were brothers and they broke up. And so then my brother got the Charlie Lewis and we feast her. And then after we feast her, I was piloting with him all them years. And that was your father's boat. It was. It was the one that was named after him. He was. He didn't oh, own the boat. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. That's nice that you got to fish mm -hmm. that boat. Yeah. Brothers got to fish yeah. that. Yeah. And then we, after we got her, they uh, built him the. Oh, shit. Tiger shark. No, before we got the tiger shark, we had uh, well, like, Bill Walker. Oh, did I say the Bill Walker a while ago? Yeah. Huh. Well, anyway, we had the Bill Walker, and then we got the tiger shark. Mm -hmm. And I was piled on her with him. And then after that, we got the ship island, and I was piled with my brother on that. And then the next year we got the, they built that new boat, the Southwester for him. And we got her from Texas and brought her to, and feast her out of Moss Point. And what company were you fishing for down there? Uh, after, we, after we left the Bill Walker, it was a Smith, uh -huh. Smith Fish Mill Company. Harvey Smith? Uh, I, Gilbert run that plant, but it was Harvey's and them, mm -hmm. all of them, I don't know who owned it. Mm -hmm. Smith's. Yeah. Okay. All three of them? Plants? No. Oh, I thought you were saying you Quinn. did three. Oh, okay. Quinn. Uh-huh. We sold fish also to standard products. Because you were fishing? See, these boats, these plants come in, had the plants, then had the boats. Oh. And they'd fish the boats on a 46. So we put out fish at times that where we, we could sell them for the year. So who owned the boat you were on? At different times. These boats you saw him about was the Walkers. Walker. It, it sailed the Walker. The ship, ship yeah. Ship and it was island. okay for you to sell your fish to different companies? Well, well they, they had it already they had. had a contract with them. I gotcha. Oh, that's interesting. They had, yeah. The Walkers didn't have a factory. Yeah. No. Right. Oh, okay. Part of the time, at first we were selling, they were selling the fish to uh, Quinn until we got to the Stand tiger up. shark, yeah. yeah. And then he left, you know, the walkers and went with the fish meal company after that. Mm -hmm. And you said that your father then became a shore captain for a while? Yeah. What does that mean? He was in charge of all the boats and everything and what went on, you know, about that there. And then 
he had a, a stroke and died and weren't in 56 weren't it yeah is that what usually happened when a captain got a little age on him he would become shore captain where he wasn't out on the water but he would keep or track of walker him. wanted uh, yeah. him to run the boat i mean to be over the boats and hard the captains and all that mm -hmm. stuff because they were a shipyard see and they didn't know nothing mm -hmm. about that right but your dad knew everything about it so he was a deficient yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah and he knew a lot of the guys he could hire you know that would be good captains and everything. Do you remember what year your father was born? Yeah, 1898. Hmm. Right. And did y'all grow up when you say Beaufort? Was it Lennoxville right. Road? Was it? <laughs> we were all the way down on Lennoxville Point. Okay. Starving. <laughs> uh huh. You were down at the point. Yeah. Near the Black Cat? Yeah, I North live. Point. I still live down on Lennoxville. We lived over on the north side. Uh-huh. Right yeah. to that second fish factory and the little store was there. Yeah. Turned over on the north side. Yeah. Daddy even owned some land out in front of uh, where Standard Products had that factory and where, you know, mm -hmm. he owned part, I don't know, section about two or three hundred feet or something other by something right in there where the factory in that section and sold it to them. It must have been real different back then. Yeah, was it wasn't it a, much. Was it a dirt road? <laughs> no, it ever since. Not. Well, it was when Daddy was growing up. When me too. When I was. Were they, weren't they really Lanningsville Road? That's, That's so right. Cool There's another way to get down there. Uh, I, I'm not talking about going down to the house. I'm talking all the way to town. No. Yeah, no, that's what I'm talking. Daddy, Daddy said it used to. It it was a dirt road all the way to town. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When he was growing up down there in, mm -hmm. in the early 1900s. Well, in the early 1900s, Ann Street was a dirt street and everything. You know. Right. right. Yeah, it was a lot of difference. You know. But uh, we, uh, it was pretty, it, it wasn't even though down where we lived, they had never got the, when I was real young, they didn't even have power poles down there, mm -hmm. down, in, down on Lennoxville Point down in there. Mm -hmm. They did, going down by the, the turning circle at the end of the road, they, they had power poles there, but they stopped. And then later on, they put them in, didn't they? Right. And when you were coming up then, how many factories were out that away? Uh, well, they had, uh, let's see, it weren't, weren't. Standard and Potter's? Well, at first, Standard didn't have no plant down there. There was Morris. Lambert Morris. Morris. Lambert, Morris. Morris. Lambert had it. Had a so little old plant. And before, the had it they good. had they had a a plant way down on the point down there near about to Lennoxville Point, but that had done. Daddy used to work. Said he worked around that when he was a boy, you know, but that wasn't there when I can remember. Okay. It was only the that one plant was the main plant was down there. Lambert's didn't run very much, did it? Not a whole. I don't know. We were gone in the summertime, anyway. And so, did y'all ever fish out of Beaufort? Did I, did, yeah. I did in the fall. Yeah. Okay. But not summer months. No. Right. First, let me, first let me ask that, that before we get we get off of off of the thing. But as a pilot, did you have a second pilot in there with you, or were you the only pilot the whole time? Well, we were supposed to have. On well, some of them, we were supposed to have a second pilot, but I I done both of it, didn't I? Yep. With the help of me. Being I was about to say, say you, you rely on the captain to, yeah. to help out. Yeah. That's a long job being pilot. Yeah. Well, sometimes, for a long day. sometimes we have another one of the boys that, if it was a white feller that we had, you know, that that was up there and worked with us, he he'd do a little bit of it, wouldn't he? You know, helping out, just like ants and. Uh, he went with us there, and 
I think he got some of the pay, you know, and I got, you know, most of it. You know, but he worked in the net too, see, so that helped him out. And the job of pilot for you from the time you move her from the dock till you get back to the dock till you move her under the pump and get her pumped out. Yes, yeah, the right. job. It's well, a long job. Yeah, well, for somebody mm -hmm. listening to this who doesn't know anything about it, can you just describe what does a pilot do on a Menhaden vessel? What's your job? Well, <laughs> the job of the pilot is to, he runs the boat, I mean, as far as drives the boat, and uh, then when it makes sets, he's on, he stays on the boat, the captain, well, there's some captains now that don't leave the boat, you know, but most of the captains go out in the purse boats. And then when they get ready to pick up, the pilot comes alongside and close enough where he can hook up to the net, you know, and picks up that way. And then you're running the boat all day long and nights and everything else. Plus telephone. Yeah. Don't leave that off. Plus when you get back to the dock you gotta be there That's to right. to unload That's it. That's right, yeah. Again yeah, you the... unload the boat and, mm -hmm. and then when you get through getting her unloaded by they pick the boats back up again and then you go back out again. And so you'd need two pilots sometimes just because you'd be out yeah. there so long. Well, you'd be day relieved. and night, yeah. Uh-huh. We had 24-hour runs. Yeah. And you, it, yeah. Last and you said if, if somebody, if the crewman was white, he could come up? Well, it was just usually back then. If, he didn't have if, to. He didn't white. have to. Uh -huh. we, we'd get somebody that that knew enough about the boat too that he could he could take and uh, run the boat. I have had some of the colored fellers to help me, you know, pilot and everything too, mm -hmm. you know. At times, if you were tired, he'd come steer and everything. And so your whole life, that's what you mainly did was you were a pilot? Well, a... then I, I went captain see for oh, yeah. There's three boats in there, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then I, after that, I went with the University of North Carolina and on their boat for... But you... Wait, right here in Moorhead? Yeah. What was the name of that boat? Research vessel? Capricorn and the Machapunga boat. How about that? For the University of North Carolina, yeah. Uh -huh. I retired from there. I was in that, uh, I think, about 23 years and retired. Good. But, but you were captain of the high tide and the, uh, uh, the fishermen and the yeah, Triton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three of the Manhattan boats I was captain of. Okay. And Mr. Charlie Clifton, you were a captain mainly most of your career? I guess so, most of it. I started out 48 and worked one, one year was Quinn in Apalachicola, Florida. Uh -huh. I changed the scenery. Plenty of fish out. They say the fish will go where the food is. There must have been plenty of food, plenty of sharks out of Cape San Blas. Anyway, uh, I moved on with Smith, and the first boat I fished here in the fall, Charles Hubbard Rice. You know the picture you got me. Big nice boat. Real nice. Mm -hmm. Set up nice for this. Also had depth recorder on it, and at that time catching those small fish, you couldn't be. Well, but the whole. Well, I put pretty much a life in there. Left the uh, fi fishing. Wife said, I'm coming home. Daughter says, I'm coming home. I'm not spending no more time except Carter County. I said, good. I'm coming right behind you. Now oh, they got tired of living on the Gulf for half the year. They didn't want to stay away. And 
I had the license to go anywhere I wanted. I knew that. By the way, this Walker outfit mm -hmm. put a deal to me. Along with my deeds, first summers in the first of December, they said, we want you to go to school, get a settled master license. We'll pay for the school. You hold them till we sell the boat and you're free. I said, it's a good deal. Because I didn't have the money to go in that school. And that was one of the finest school mobile. And by the help of the master, I passed that test, come home. Mm -hmm. Well, I got lots of kickback. What are you going to do with them? You went down there, we laid around home all winter, you know, rested up. I got lots of that, you know. I said, fine. When they come to get the job, they said they had two openings on the ferry. Well, I also had a brother-in-law working there. Engineer, good. Hubert Davis, fine, fine man. I put in for the job, got the job. A lot of them give me six weeks. I didn't give myself that long, really. I said, I don't think this is for me. I ended up there 23 years. Oh my gosh. North Carolina ferry system? And the ferry system. Well, I pulled 20 months of that superintendent down there. I told him I'm tired of this, I knew. And you got to realize at that time there's enough politics to go around. Mm -hmm. I said, it's time for me to get out. I got out. Yeah. Well, Mr. Charlie, could you describe to us the duties and responsibilities of a Menhaden captain? Well, the first thing people produce, they're going to get rid of him. <laughs> That's number one. Yeah. Number one. <laughs> or he's going to put you on a sorry or boat. And what do uh -huh. I mean by that? Everything not working right every day. Mm -hmm. It was strictly on a percentage basis. The way you got paid, if you didn't catch any fish, you didn't make no money. Mm. And that was, I mean, everybody knew that. Of course, I weren't the only one. You had a crew depending on you. Yes, sir. You look back there, at one time we had 18 men. We got to have money when Saturday comes. Mm. You got plenty of responsibility on you. Well, the next thing, you fight and study trying to get a better rig. You want a better boat, a newer boat. Mm -hmm. And debts. See, you got so many items you after. If you get a good engine and got a net, you're in just a bad shape. If you can't get the equipment, it don't take much to throw you out. I do tell you that and get those out. Well, that's pretty much the size of that duty's responsibility. And you had to make all the decisions on board, right? That's right. You made them where you were going to the dock, where you were going to leave the dock, where you were going. And that's pretty much a full-time job. Were you in charge of rounding up your crew? You better believe it. And plus, trying to keep a crew we at that time. Mm -hmm. I mean, during the war times, personnel was hard to find, trying to keep a, a good crew. And you had to catch enough fish to, for them to survive as well as you. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'll say the captain, chief, engineer, and pilot was getting most of the money. But, at the same time, if you kept one of them big boats loaded, they made enough money to live. So it sounds like it would shake out after a while where the high boat captain would have the best vessel, the strongest nets, you and the it. best crew. It's like, it's like any enterprise in and this country. Talk, and anything can, around the world. Mm -hmm. The cream rises to the crop. Uh, yeah.
That's right. That's the way. That's competitive, huh? You better believe it is, but very much. Well, the other part that, that in there is that the, the the owners held the captain fully responsible for the boat. He was a responsible person. And I will also say, even my father, he loved to put a net in a purse boat. We call it Sierra No Buck Stop. It had to be perfect. Mm -hmm. If it weren't perfect, he didn't yeah. want it. Mm. But now, it don't matter how the net comes, just so she does come in the boat mm -hmm. right over there. <laughs> She'll go out. Yeah. I mean. Sounds like there was a tremendous amount of pressure on the There was lots of changes. You needed good scene setters See, and everything. It was else. lots of changes mm -hmm. about this time. Diesel wedges was coming on scene. Not long nets, airplanes. Oh, I don't even get that so. Airplanes, oh, uh, net house men get messed up with a net. She can be brand new. You can't catch nothing with her court, so want to bundle up on her. All such as that. Mm -hmm. you, you had to know. You had to know the net and what you it would do, and how to tell the same lock men to uh, how you repair it. Or you you better believe it. Mm -hmm. And. That's pretty much, that pretty much covers the... Well, I would think that the, when the airplane uh, spotters came along... Were, I know what you do. Why was that not a good thing? It was, it was right. a good thing. Uh -huh. It was better for some than it was others. <laughs> right. Oh, because that was another <laughs> little competitive thing where they would... You uh, better believe another story. Oh, well tell me about it. No, I don't know too much about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know too much about it. <laughs> Let's back Charlie up a little bit and ask him what were some of the other jobs he did before he got to be captain. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, going back to Smith's, I was thinking about a day. I'd say 12 people, if they weren't engineers first on his boots, they didn't likely become captain. I kept like Wiley, Charlie Mason, um, Jimmy Lupton. Jimmy Lupton, but Jimmy was in the engine room. Yes, he come up, mean. but through Wallace. Mm -hmm. But it was, I'd say, about a dozen. If you were, if you proved out in that engine room, you didn't have to worry about a captain's job. You'd get that. Otis was so much younger coming up in this thing. It. It didn't help him, I mean, as far as coming on up in. And two, I needed the pilot, say. I weren't no rush for him to move on. I mean, you can see that. See, that pilot has more duties. The duties he had mostly weren't the duties he told you. That's right. Mm. The duties I like is that radio all night, his listening, four or five radios in his ear all day long. They're doing good over here, doing good. This plane's seen that. And we knew the airplanes because we did our wives. That's right. And plus, we had some big sets of fish around Morgan City. Water spouts. One thing that's coming down on you all the time. You got to have somebody in their wheelhouse knows what they're doing. And I had the best. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I did. One time I thought I was gone. I figured I might as well get old Tom Wait, I ain't tell you about that one. But that's, I mean, you know too who you can depend on. I knew just as good the ones I'd really put my dependence in, say. Uh -huh. Captain, no better than his crew. You better believe it. Who was your very favorite to work with? To work with? You mean company? No. Um, I wanted the boat, you mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, at the time, would have been my brother. I guess you don't know anybody better than I that. I mean, huh? I got to say it for him, of course, going home, we may not agree together, <laughs> but you won't never know it. Now back when you're fishing with your daddy, did he, did he have you in the bunk pile or? He did. I didn't know we fish with daddy. So. Oh, didn't you? No. Okay. I come right out the engine room. You went right out the engine room. Okay. Right into this net. Okay, that's good. I got me a mate, Colin Eagles, out of Southport. He knew the net 
better than I'll ever dream. But he was the mate. I'd make the final decision. But that's pretty much. Can you tell me some of the what it means? What, like you said, for a while you were pulling corks. Yeah, when you yeah out. I what, is, what does that, that mean? Is, is it any of them old photographs over there that I could show her that? Let's see. I don't know. Any. It. We didn't bring the ones where the boat, the net was already out. I can see some no, corks there. there. Yeah. Well, the but the net was mm -hmm. spread out way big circles to start with mm -hmm. and the two purse boats come together like that there and they had a tom weight and all well then when they started pursing the net you'd had to get up on the stern of the purse boat and pull corks you know as they were pursing her in the net kept getting littler and littler if you didn't do that the feast would go right over top then and, and you had to use manpower then. Shower nets. Yeah. Okay, so they were down there pulling the net, and you were up on the stern gathering the corks out of the way? Well, at first they purse her, you know, and then as she kept coming in, the corks, you had to pull the corks in, mm -hmm. and then they had a seine setter that stacked the corks over on the back side of the purse boats, the linked them power. across here. Uh -huh. And he laid them. But see now. I done that, and then later on, I, I got iron pulled the net just like those other guys. I was just like one of the other crew. Just let and me then all let that. me lay one on Steve. I'm gonna put one on you. What you do? Go ahead. on with this pile. <laughs> we were down to a place we call Bird Island, which means nothing, y'all. But we were laying around, we thought the fish was going to show up. And they did. And they were coming off in places. I kept telling Otis, they coming off, I had to watch him. Well, everywhere I went, one of them days, you don't have them, but these days, nothing. If you plan on and know you know you're right, here's a place a fish gets right in front of those we call pumping stations. It's where an oil well has been drove. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's about so single pile. Yeah, but they had a, it had a bunch of extra pilings all yes. up and down there, like a mm -hmm. fenders. But anyway, the planes that Charlie either you sat on them, or you were out for the night. Well, those fish would get better in the night time. Anyway, I went and sat in front of them. When I sat and started what we call pursing the net together and getting the fish all up, I seen the tide cutting us right on to this well. Mm -hmm. Of course, he was already on it, and he had to cook with this big hook, I believe it was. Yeah. Caught that just a court line. He could have ripped the net wide open. He could have done a lots of things there. And worked that net with that boot around enough that that set a fish in that net two or three hundred thousand come right on offshore. And then he was able to back up enough and get the hook the whole work. Nothing happened. All we done was pump the fish. Now you just got to have those good men. Jimmy Lupton would have told you that today when he had Harry. Mm -hmm. When he had Harry, Harry with him. was he good? Yeah. I'm telling you, it's just like Cap may no better than his crew. No better. That's right. So when you're just starting out, you might start off as a cork puller. Yeah, he and then go move on up. Yeah, you can. Some people start out, they get better breaks or something. I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they start out. Get an A for that one. But but anyway, uh, I learned a lot, you know, by doing that. And then a sane setter is next, maybe. Uh, I know I never did. No, that was that was, a, that was a hard job. Oh, that's a hard job. Yeah, yeah, because he had when you they they throw corks, they'd had to fold them, link them like, and they throw them 
Oh, I don't know. Nearby in here <laughs> to the kitchen. You know. He'd throw them. He'd throw yeah. them to the engine. He threw them to, up to the engine box. You know. He'd, he'd had to link them in that yep. thing and get them just right. So when they they go out, they the, go you, right. you, 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 like that. There they didn't get twisted up, caught up, or anything. Yeah. yeah. Just right. Yeah, it was a difference back then. Yeah, it was a difference. You didn't uh, have I mean, as the right. boats were splitting up, yeah. as it was paying out, the, yeah, right. okay, yeah. I the got corks you. had to go out a certain way, and the rings had to go out a certain way. And that would be the ring setter? Ring yeah, it was a ring setter, yeah. Okay. He, he done, they had them on a rod, like, and the rings would go out. If you didn't do everything in the purse line, had to be have enough tension on it. Everything had to be just right. Mm -hmm. If you didn't, you'd get a fouled up net and you couldn't get your fish and everything else. And everybody be you mad. You done somebody, didn't you, Steve? Yeah. So yeah. Everybody and be mad. Steve yeah. knows Steve knows what it is. Yeah, that's right, it was. You couldn't everything had to work perfect. Yeah. What if your finger got caught in the net? You lost a finger. You lost a finger. That I tell you what lot. was look, <laughs> what was the worst when I was growing up? Before I ever got captain or anything, when you pull in that net like that there, mm -hmm. if it was a big swell and stuff and you had so much strain on it, if everybody didn't turn loose, you get your fingers caught in there and it would never cut them off mm -hmm. and ring. Yeah. It'd, go over, it'd go over the rail, you know. A lot of weight <laughs> yeah. on that string and nothing yeah. there. Pure tension on you that see net. how much pulling they pull in in that net there? Yeah. Yeah. They pull in, they got right much strain, see? Uh huh. That was way back there. Nowadays, they don't pull near as much. They don't get it over the rail or nothing. Are these what you'd call the bunt pullers? Yeah. Yeah, that's the bunt, that's yes. the working boy. Well, it might, the maid even could be in there with oh, yeah. some of them, yeah. I don't know. But not no more. No. Yeah. Not no more. Everybody not gets out. Now, I got, I got some regular film uh, now on DVD of Ben Hayden fishing the way it is now. I even got some on the Frosty. I went with Elmer Pilot on mm -hmm. on her there, and uh, I took her right, she was 200 foot, and used to carry the Smiths through the bridge, you know, and had the train trussle and everything there, right there. And I'd had, and you about touched the- You weren't far away, right? On the side, <laughs> and then you had to break her just a little, turn her just a little bit in that, them fender pilings, if you didn't, she'd hit, you know. Yeah, she you didn't have much on. room, did you? No. Not at all. I can remember hearing the whistle blow for the, yeah. the bridge, and hear the factory over there yeah. banging and slamming. Yeah, she had them five horns and I know the people in town didn't like it when you blow for the bridge. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Why was it necessary for the captain to get in the purse boats? I wouldn't say it's so necessary if he's got somebody who wants to work the net that used he he does if he'll do his job, he'll do a little work mm -hmm. once in a while. You know, ring bites, things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, exactly. But uh if if not, they bunch of them now. They get so old, can't hardly maneuver. Just let somebody else do it. You got to have somebody good enough that is about good as a captain to go in the boat. Better. You'll find them better. They refer yeah. to the purse boats as the captain boat and the mate boat. The captain yeah. boat would steer one around, the mate the other, and realistically, you'd rely on the captain to yeah. be the man who called the shots in person. That's that right. Boat. Okay. He's the one that told them when to purse and when not to purse, yeah. and when to stop, yeah. when to do everything. See, He's making that's all right. the decisions. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. He's got that radio. He's listening to the radio. Yeah. And he used to, didn't have no radio. Someone got one to make boat. He used to work the yeah. rings a lot, too. Yeah. yeah. One to make boat, yeah. one in the captain boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's a ring bite? A ring bite? Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm going to a net. Usually, I let's, let's see if you can even see a ring. A there, longer ring. And in any of them photographs. Tall ring right on it. Yeah. The, the bottom line of the net runs there's through ring it right there. together. He's got it. Right there. You see a few of them coming uh -huh. out of there. Metal rings? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brass rings. Ours stainless. 
long snap. Yeah. Long at last, yeah. they got sting, uh, snap rings. You could then snap yeah. rings. Yeah. That's what they've got now, right? They yeah. snap it. Snap. Yeah. yeah. But used to, you couldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, and also in the center of the purse line, there's a snap hook. It snaps it together, mm -hmm. and they break it apart there. But used to, they didn't have none of that. Mm -hmm. But unless you unless you had a very sharp guy, I certainly wouldn't want that captain out there in that purse boat making decisions. Uh, <coughs> I liked it that way. Because if you don't, but, don't get them fish and put them in a hole, you ain't got nothing. Uh, and you mess up on a set like we were finding it off Morgan City, you all lost a day. Yeah, That's right. oh, it was. Uh, one of the Virginia captains used to take and he could, they had his boat hooked up where up at the mast, at the top of the mast. He didn't go in, in later years, he didn't go into purse boats. And he, I know down in Louisiana, he would uh, take and get up by the net when they were pursing her and he'd tell them, he had a loudspeaker and everything, he'd tell them what to do and everything, you know. He was wanting, he was wanting to be there. Yeah. Yeah. He was, <laughs> He was he up. To be there. He even had an elevator take him up to the top of the mast. Yeah. Getting old, oh didn't gosh. want to quit. Yeah, the last mm -hmm. boat I was on had an elevator to go up to the top of the mast, and she had controls and everything. How about that? But, but if he had if he had a guy who run that purse boat for him, chances are he give him some little extra money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing yeah. the job they, for him. Oh they, yeah. He they got part of his pay. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. yeah. That's just yeah. like me and the pilot. You know, he got part of my money being out. I didn't have a second pilot. You know, he, he'd be working in the net. net, and I'd give him part of my money to go up there and... Give you a break. Yeah, you know, yeah. It was one good thing I wanted to be sure to put in this report. I never fished for a company that I didn't know that winter, by January, what I'd be getting for my fish next summer. But every other fishery, a shrimp, uh, eatable, anything yeah. round, you don't know what you get till you go to dock that's Saturday. Right. Come. That's right. And that's, and that's, they would tell you a year yeah. ahead. About that. Yeah, I don't know. Did you notice? Did uh, you know yeah, I knew what again? I was going to get, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's exactly uh, some, of the, well, some of the plants there I think that's less. enough for one yeah. day. She won't know what the uh, No, no, we're just getting going. It, no, it, was, it was a lot of boats that, uh, <laughs> a lot of the plants now are prorated up to so many million fish, you get so much oh, money, yeah. and right. yeah. then the right. more you catch, they, they do that to try to get you to do better or something. They work you harder or something. Yep. Now, did y'all have to sign a contract with any of these companies? To I never, didn't. I never signed a contract. In fact, we owned the boots. The boots was leased off to us. Yeah. Yeah. Had our own bank accounts. We could pay off whenever we felt paying off. We could do anything we wanted. And if a boat broke down, who we would pay paid, for it? We paid for the railway's bill. We bought a net. We paid for the net. Out of the shares? No. Oh. No. So the when crew leased, would never have to worry about... No. When they, they leased the boat, mm -hmm. they leased her to the captain. Mm -hmm. They didn't do that till later years. Right. Well, considering how competitive mm -hmm. it was, were there any cutthroat captains that would try to sabotage another operation or was it all kind of friendly competition? Yeah, it was pretty friendly. Yeah. Kind of I, don't, I don't know if anybody I did ever anybody tried to cut that. my throat or no. nothing. No. Yeah, well that's good. I mean, they, you know, they wanted to do better than you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so yeah. Just, you got captains from Louisiana, from the Gulf, you got mm -hmm. captains from here, you got captains from Florida. Virginia. Yeah. Florida. Were there any differences in fishing styles? Yeah. Reputation. I was scared to eat at sanitary for he would them take a net and take a sanitary in. <laughs> yeah. What a who? But, but yeah, I fished out of Southport there one time. I wasn't captain then. Uh, I fished out of uh, with Elmer Dudley. I fished out of there one time out of Southport to plant there. 
And we had Virginia captain there too. Mm -hmm. the, the the fishing style you mentioned though, a lot of that had to do with the with the the weather and the environment that you're around, yeah. like deep water. Right. Uh, yeah. Around this area here in off Virginia versus yeah. shallower water yeah. down in the Gulf right. type fishing you had to do muddy water versus right. clear water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes down in the down around Louisiana and places you you drug bottom a lot. You, you know, were in the mud. Yeah, you were in there deep. I mean, it was mm. you, you, you around get here a set of fish, and then you had to really dig her to get off. Of around here, you'd have a deeper net and had to work her different than you. We had some right mm. deep nets, so at times twelve hundred marks. I think I did. Yeah. Was it more dangerous to fish on the in the Atlantic than the Gulf? I don't think so. I, it had them oil rigs. I, it's two or three that got killed around here. Sandy Arthur. Yeah, Sandy. Mm -hmm. well, I, I think the danger. Yeah, was down there. I was. I was down in. I weren't down there. Not then. I then quit. I was with the university when all this happened. But right where he got killed, I, I we fished right there. Yeah. How did he get killed? It hit a pipeline. It hit a pipeline. And it exploded. Blew, blew yeah, it, it burned him up that. or something. And his got killed there. anyway. Yeah, I don't know how many men got killed. He, he may have just been a. He they was may engineer. have been in. Yeah. a few of them got killed. He yeah. was an engineer. I think most of them was in the purse boats, weren't they? When they, I think oh. I'm not sure. I can't remember. And the big boat hit a pipeline. Yeah, it's her but, bottom uh, and it exploded. Mm. We, excuse it, me. You're talking about conditions. If you're fishing around here in December and the weather's bad, you got bad conditions. Oh yeah. I mean, there's been a number of boats lost. I fished in the right fall of the year here. Uh, yeah. And we got in some scrapes before. Yeah. A lot of times in the fall of the year, I'd go with Elmer, you know. Mm -hmm. And one one fall, we had the old uh, Smith Point. She was old converted Tug tugboat yeah. like thing, been cut in two and big. And we had her loaded and we were coming back and she had electric steering on her and but it was real rough when we come around the knuckle there and we never about lost that boat. She broke the davit out of her and her spoke fell and she fell over on her side and they wanted to cut that mm -hmm. one out and I you know, cut the other cable. I said, if you do, you're gonna lose the other purse boat. And they, they didn't. Uh, so they didn't do it. And we got called the Coast Guard, but they, <laughs> they didn't help us now. But then, I mean, they come out there, but they didn't have nothing but a 44 footer. They could have picked us up if we'd have sunk. I guess. Mm -hmm. You, you guys have spent a lot of years here, and yeah. you've seen the, you've seen the changes in Beaufort. What do you think that? effect the Manhattan industry had on this area. On it's pitiful. See, let me show you another one. That's the reason I bought that. I'm over in the theory a little bit on this, but you take a, a boy that falls out of high school anywhere. They don't have that many now. They're coming up on it. He could always go fishing. You say, well, ain't much of a life, but I'll put it this way, some will fire it all right, you know. Now, it, if he falls out of school, what's he supposed to do? You ain't got nothing put him nowhere. You got a little tourist yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. Let it get hard time and see what happens yeah. to the tourists. i tell you what. See, it's gone. <clears throat> Look. We got the ferry, same way. We sat right around, watch them move everything out of the port building. Man's Harbor. See, they got the shipyard there. If a guy wants to try to get him into the ferry, he got to go to the Man's Harbor. See? Just about to take that out the balance. If they could, they cut the sea raw and the co off. Mm -hmm. They already cut night runs out. I run nights down there four or five years. I don't know. Uh, <coughs> I don't think it's as safe as daytime runs. But I didn't see nobody having the problem. 
and we're losing quarter cow fast. But without fast. without the fight grizz and the boats. No fight grizz, no boats. It's, they yeah. made a many a dollar for mm. this county. You, but you just think all them boats with 20 and 25 men on them that come here in the fall of the year. They all the out. service stations that was up there and everybody made a good living, you know, off of it. And the grocery stores and everything else. I don't know how many boats it would be up here in the fall of the year all tied up from the post office mm -hmm. right on down just as far as you could get them offshore. Mm -hmm. And all the grocery stores, all the clothing stores, and everything else, everybody was making a good living off them boats. Barbers made real oh, good money. Man. Mm -hmm. I spent $24,000 of the Smith money right there with Nelson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On one rig. Yeah. Imagine what the grocery bills were for the yeah. that they were, you know, grocery stores made. Yeah. What was Smith Nelson? Hmm. A gas station? No, no Nelson. Nelson Gillikin had he owned Barbers. Barbers, barbers Marine. Oh, Barbers. Yeah, Barbers Marine. Yeah. I thought you were talking about yeah, Barbers. I told you. Yeah, I told you. Oh, no. I told you. They probably time helped out them ago. a little bit. But I yeah, they did. I've never heard Steve. that the Barbers who got hair yeah, were no. making lots of money. There's a condo down there now. Yeah, Barbers Marine. Barber <laughs> Marine, you know. That's barbers, I got you. Hey, yeah, Barbers. Cut the machine. It's time for yeah. you to go. <laughs> yeah. Cut the machine. Well, it was hard to watch the very last factory get torn down, wasn't it? Yeah. You better believe it. Well, see, mm -hmm. Wallace Quinn had a factory down here. Mm -hmm. Rabbi Smith. Yeah, on the other side there where the, well, I don't know, that movie place, Summer Slug in there, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, then Smith's. Yep, different days. Yeah. Different days. But I know you guys growing up down in Lennoxville, but the years <laughs> you spend down there, them factories yeah. running. Yeah. The way they were, that was an interesting I know, the, the only thing, the, I know the smell was bad, but it was a many a person could put up with the smell on account of the money was coming. Mm -hmm. When he's hungry. Because even in the cruise, if His wife very... wants a new car. Yeah. Don't want to use one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. If, uh, if you know, the, the way it was I... back then, you take all that, them crews, even in favor from Virginia. They spent a lot of money here while they were here, yes, you know. They did. And you take that was a big crowd. It was a crowd of people, you know. Yeah. Uh, when used to everybody would come mm -hmm. here on the fall of the year, it it was like a ghost town about after Christmas. <laughs> but I bet there were some happy Christmases. Yeah. Ooh. Good money yeah. fell into just, town. Yeah, I've got just one store. This is the last store. Yeah, now. please. This is the last store. <laughs> <coughs> I was over in Mobile. You used to go over there about 40 miles driving time. And, boy, first thing my daughter jumped all of them. said, Dad, Mama won't let me drive nearly a bit around here yeah. in this town. No, no drive. I don't worry about this, baby. You go home, I'll guard Dick Parker's and get you one. Don't worry about that. I'll pay her no more. Yeah. Well, that had been two months and she was getting ready to come home and go to school. I come home one day. We used to hover around the golf station, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, where's my baby? I said, I'm going to tell you, you ain't going to want to see her. She's riding around in a brand new Ford. Do you hear me? Yeah. I said, do you know she's not? She come up, she said, Dad, was this the one you were talking about? I said, no, baby, we ain't buying no <laughs> automobile. Oh, yeah. yeah. Boy, that was a hot woman I had. Yeah. She said, I told you she was going to hold you to that. I said, let her have it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my she God. Run somewhere else. She just went and picked, her, picked <laughs> out a car? She went and picked it out herself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How's that captain's money was making? Yeah. yeah. That's right. But you talk, uh, Charlie, others mentioned about Christmas time. Yes. I know you remember the boats heading back to Reedville yes. with Christmas presents aboard them, Santa Claus, yes. Yes. aboard the boats when they left here. Oh, yes. really? Yeah. And I can tell you when we tied the boards 
like we put all of them when they loaded mm -hmm. down at the water link mm -hmm. on the Hubbard Rice and get her to yeah, keep yeah. the ice from cutting her going across Tampa, uh, Albemarle Sound. Well, when we carried the tiger shark to Virginia, they yeah. weren't we carried in the canal. Code, no. Yeah, <laughs> we uh, carried her back to in the inland waterway and we were up there in Bayou Virginia and it was iced all over and of course she was steel and she'd break out, she was sort of broad and her bow was and she'd take that ice and sheets of it would slide ahead of her. That was a noisy noise. Yeah. It was a real noisy one. That's where you got to the locks. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever, uh, were you ever out there fearing for your life? No. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I, I don't think I have. Well, that went on Smith Point probably. Yeah, it weren't very good that time. I mean, yeah. I, I, I weren't that scared. I mean, you know, but she could have turned over or something. Other, you know, she was loaded, and we finally got her in, into the hook of the cape, and anchored there. Until we, the next day, we finally got that purse boat up, and we had to tow them, you know. How about well, how about when she caught on fire? We, oh, don't end of that one. That was the... He, he, he doesn't want to tell it. all the good stories. No, yeah, Charlie, the, Charlie, the, Charlie, the, Charlie couldn't tell you everything he knows. I know. Yes, a lot of us couldn't. I mean, it's a lot of it just kept to come to me about... <laughs> When the yeah, black gold caught on fire in the galley oh, and yeah. burnt the whole galley up. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. And our wallets Tell me and all about those No, I ain't been no I don't want to talk yeah. about me. Yeah. You're, you're, I, think yeah. he, I think he got about talked out. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, we'll have to do round two sometime. No, I uh, would be way here before no. I die. If I could remember everything that Charlie's told me through you, yeah, I'd tell you something. Steve with that. <laughs> he could tell you something. Clearly. Hundreds and hundreds of hours. Yeah. Mm. All good hours. Was there one more thing you wanted to add, Otis? No. About that fire? No, Otis. I don't want Otis to mention that. <laughs> yeah. That's a bad thing to go by. That's yeah. right. All right. Well, you want to end on a positive note? Yeah, they did. We've enjoyed being yeah. here. Put in. I appreciate Steve. You need to cut a bunch of that out of here. <laughs> I think have this right. little ordeal. I and by the way, Steve has been so uh, nice to me. Yeah. That's, uh, he has. He has taken care of. I've been sick. Uh, I was sick all last year, really. <laughs> Oh, uh, I ain't saying I'm in good shape now, but my feet's on the floor. Thank the Lord for that. But yeah. Steve has been real nice, not only checking on me, seeing I needed this or needed that, and I appreciate that. That's what good friends all about, ain't it? And yes, but he don't have to be as good as you've been. Yeah. No, it's nice. Glad and yeah. I'd like for you to know somebody outside to know it. Mm -hmm. Outside my family knows it, mm -hmm. and I mean we've had some good talks. Days when I felt bad and hurting, I had three operations in one month, mm -hmm. and it put me down. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, it took my strength to have my arms. You can tell there how ring <laughs> shame mm -hmm. on, but that's the way they are, and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be uh, safe to say though that Manhattan fishing has been good for the Lewis family. It has. It has. Both of y'all's families. It's been good to Smith's. Yeah. Where pretty much one of the brothers was raised right in the sun of the same house with me. I know quite a bit about Smith's. Really? That yeah. uh, Marinoy would love to know. <laughs> me and Steve's not going to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I got to yeah. say. All right, well, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate mm -hmm. your, your uh, taking the time to do this. It's not too much, but you get an idea about how things is going back in them years. And the Menhaden opened up real good along about the time I come on board for my father. Mm -hmm. He'd leave down here, as I told Steve, I'd never faced out of here except the fall. In the fall of the year, yeah. 
was uh, but I appreciate the life that I live. I try to live a pretty clean life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's when with some money Steve, being coming in. Huh? I have got yeah. a man Aiden fish caught off of Morgan City. It it looked so bad I wouldn't bring any in. Now this tell me right. If you want it, huh, I'm ashamed to say that. Or if you thought anything could be done to it, it's already on the board, on the board. I'd love for you to have it, but Let's do it. if it's so, I'll get that one I've got it here in the car. Cracked up, and everything. It's yeah. cracked up, but I believe one of them guys out there at Dixon Board put some kind of shellac on it. Okay. I mean, you can really tell it's a fish, yeah, but it's okay. cracked up. Right. So, I'm going to turn this off. Signing off. I love it.